Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's a beautiful morning. Uh, I have a new favorite song, and we're going to sing it for you this morning. They kind of go weekly. I always have a new favorite song. This one is by, by Unspoken. It's called Call It Great. Welcome to worship. We're so glad to have all who are gathered with us today for worship. Before we get started, we'd like to take a moment to welcome any visitors we may have with us this morning. If you are a visitor, please raise your hand so we can greet you with a card. All familiar faces. We're so glad to have all of us here. We begin our service today in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you confess that you are, because of your fallen human nature, a sinner unworthy of God's favor? Do you desire to be saved from eternal condemnation? 
Confess your sins, therefore, and plead Almighty God to have mercy. Please kneel as you're able or remain seated for the confession. Heavenly Father, I confess that I am sinful through and through and can in no way save myself or better myself. Only by your mercy and grace, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, can I be made clean. Wash me in holy and precious blood and save me. God did not send his son to condemn you, but that you might be saved through him. By the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, your sins are graciously and completely forgiven, and by his resurrection you have new life in him. Amen. Praise and praise God, Please rise. May the God of peace give you give you peace at all times and in every way. Let us share the peace with one another. Peace. Peace, friend. Peace, buddy. We pray together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
as we rejoice. You may be seated. The first lesson is from Isaiah, the 12th chapter. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away, that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, Make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The word of the Lord.
Our responsive psalm reading is taken from Psalm 32. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. You are a hiding place for me. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. Be not like a horse or mule without understanding. Many are the sorrows of the wicked. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous. Here ends the psalm reading. The second lesson is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. The children are welcome forward for the children's message. Come on up. Howdy. Hey there. <laughs> Good thing he doesn't have teeth, huh? No teeth. <gasps> Did you lose a tooth? <coughs> oh, I can eat candy with or without teeth. Well, you know what? One time when I was young, I must have been, oh, maybe in, well, seventh or eighth grade, junior high, and school was out for summer. And I was out playing with one of my friends, and we went to a place that we called Louie's Dump. What's that? Well, Louie's Dump was a place where there were a bunch of old wrecked cars and old washing machines and old rusty things and lots of glass and broken bottles and all kinds of stuff. Why were you there? Well, probably because we were told we weren't supposed to go there. <laughs> hmm. We weren't being very good. We were being kind of naughty. We were... We went where we weren't supposed to go, and we were playing there, and it was bad enough that I was there, and I wasn't supposed to be. I was also supposed to be at a dentist appointment. Woohoo, you were in trouble. <laughs> I was in big trouble. When I remembered that I was supposed to be at the dentist appointment, I started running towards home because Louie's dump was outside of town, and I had to run all the way back home. Did you make it? 
I didn't make it. And I was sure when I saw my parents' car, guess what I said? Oh no, my parents are going to kill me. <gasps> Did they really? Uh, if they killed me, would I be here? Oh yeah. No. <laughs> I was really scared because I knew I was in big trouble and my parents were very angry with me. But they didn't kill you. Nope, they didn't kill me. They were mad, but they weren't as mad as I thought they were. And the reason they weren't that mad was because they also loved me. Hmm? And their love was stronger than their anger. And that's kind of how it is with God. God's love is stronger than his anger. So even though he might get angry with us when we do something yeah. wrong, he loves us still, and he won't destroy us, okay? His love will always say, come home. It's okay. Just don't do it again, okay? So how about if we say a prayer of thanks to God for his love, okay? Dear God, we thank you so much for your love that you showed to us in Jesus, placing the punishment we deserved upon him so that you could extend your love to us and to bring us home in peace and in freedom. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Uh, are you a dentist? <laughs> Have a good day. We stand for the hearing of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead, and he is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Ta da! <laughs> well, a familiar story. If you were here Wednesday, you heard this same gospel lesson, the parable of the prodigal son. Why twice in one week? Well, it's a big enough parable, I think it could bear hearing more than once in a week. I was sitting with a 73 year old man whose chin was on his chest and when he looked up I could see his eyes were filled with tears and he said the last thing he said to me was I wish you were dead I hate you how long ago was that I asked him well he thought for a while and he looked up and said 22 years ago you haven't heard from him in 22 years I said the man said, nope. Matter of fact, I don't know if he's alive or dead. Last hint I even got was about six years ago. My older son said he heard a rumor that he was dealing drugs down in Houston. The old man looked off into the distance and I could tell his gaze was fixed on a horizon that neither one of us could see. And those tears that were in his eyes were now coming down his cheeks. He was able to mumble, I tried to do right by him. And I did the best I could for him to teach him, but and now his shoulders started to shake as the spasms of his bitter weeping overtook him. And I realized what I was seeing was our Heavenly Father. This is the picture Jesus painted of the father in the parable of the prodigal son. A broken hearted father whose child scorned his parental care, willfully rebelled against him, stole untold thousands from his bank accounts and ran full speed ahead into the prison of his desires, foolishly thinking he was exercising his freedom. Well, there certainly is more to the picture Jesus paints than just that, but I think the Father's heart is the most important, important part of that picture because it represents most accurately how God is disposed toward us when we, like the prodigal, willfully rebel or abuse his generosity or ignore his guidance run full speed ahead into our own prisons, thinking we're exercising our freedom, never bothering to stop and talk to him, give him a call, let him know how we're doing. And if you think God weeps when he sees us doing these things, running off into self-destruction, it breaks his heart even worse when he sees that we cannot believe he will be merciful to us. When we say, my parents are going to kill me. My heavenly father is going to kill me if he catches me. We think that if he finds us, he's going to let us have it and good. And turning to go home is the last thing we think about whether it's because of fear that he's going to destroy us or hatred of his heavy-handed rule. It breaks his heart that we can't trust him, that he'll forgive us. You know, every week we gather here in worship and whether it's the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, we say, I believe in the forgiveness of sins. But so often we go out and live our lives proving that we don't. We're either too proud or too frightened to ask our Father for forgiveness. We don't dare go home because we're sure we'll get what we deserve. 
so we don't go to ask for forgiveness. Or, like that proud older brother, we don't dare give forgiveness to someone we think is undeserving. That's why Jesus told this parable. He wants us more than anything to believe that the Father is, in fact, that forgiving. He is indeed that merciful, that compassionate. That this kindness of the Almighty Creator, King and God and Ruler of all things, this kindness just sounds too good to be true, so we don't even dare. And the Father weeps. But it's true. God actually is that tender and merciful, that forgiving. There are no conditions on his mercy. Doesn't matter how far you stray. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how wastefully you've spent the blessings he has showered upon you. It doesn't matter how worthless you might feel. It doesn't matter because the forgiveness and the love and the mercy and compassion of the Father are for you and they are for real. And they will set you free. Come home. Why will you die, says the Father. Come home and live. Amen.
Together with all the saints, we confess the one true faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gifts of faith, hope, and love, that we may receive the forgiveness of you, you have promised, and love what you have commanded. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, gracious Father, in your mercy, look upon all whose increasing years bring weakness, anxiety, distress, or loneliness. Provide them with homes where love and respect, concern, and understanding are shown. Grant them the willingness in their hearts to accept help. And as their strength wanes, increase their faith and their assurance of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, Prince of Peace, we pray for all conflicts throughout the world. We especially pray for those who serve in our armed forces, Jeremy Prickett, Way Wyatt Brown, and Waylon Brown. Protect them, Lord, in their service. Be with Jeremy as he deploys to the Middle East. Give them strength and protection in all that they do. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, Lord Jesus, you have given your Son as a servant to bear the cross. Be with all those who are sick and needing of your healing hand, especially Janet Berg's back in Ray Brockhouse, Sharon Burgett's, Clifford Namath, Jean Brosman, Darwin Higgins, Maxine Colosso, and Judy Clark. And also uh, uh, give your also an obe give them an obedient heart and submissive heart that they joyfully will take upon your yoke upon them, willingly follow you in every affliction, confessing that you will restore them and in confessing your faith, and then finally protect in health and body and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we pray on behalf of all the church. We pray that where she is uh, persecuted, that you would give strength. We ask, Lord, through seminaries and other institutions, that, Lord, you would train up good leaders so that your gospel may, may be heard throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we are thankful for the gift of music and where we receive a glimpse of heaven. Lord, we thank you for those who you bless in our congregation who give us that glimpse. All the youth choirs, 
the senior choir, Peggy Stralo, Ann Crocker, Erica Shelton, and Nancy Netzel. Thank you for these gifts in which they share with us that we may have a glimpse of heaven where one day we will all with all the saints praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We bring forth our tithes and our offerings. Please rise. We pray together now our offertory prayer. Almighty and eternal God, giver of all good gifts. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in You may be seated. As we make our way toward our heavenly home, God has provided this foretaste of the feast he is preparing for you, his children. Come and receive.
Please rise. Now may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood be for you the entire forgiveness of your sins. Refresh and restore you in body and soul and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Some announcements before we go. Today, if you are not, don't have a thing immediately after service, we have coffee hour today, which is being hosted by the Trust Fund Committee. So come on down and get some refreshments. Our sympathies are with a family of David Schrader who passed away uh, the 26th, uh, Friday, February 26th. His service was here yesterday. Uh, the flowers over here and I believe over here are from the family, so we're thankful for that from the family. We also have this week, again, soup suppers this week. Uh, we have uh, cream of broccoli and beef noodle. And so thank you for all who have supported the soup suppers. And if you, we're so blessed to have you again this coming week, 4.30 to 6.30. And there'll be soup to go at the noon hour as well as uh, during the evening time. And then also there will be 6.30 worship. So come on down and join us for that. Um... Along with that, today there is Night of Music. It's today at uh, 6 p.m. at the Clintonville Elementary School Auditorium. It will be a groups of all the different churches coming and singing. So if you would like uh, to be a part of that, come on down to the elementary school and we'll uh, be singing. Along with that, there is... Oh... Spring forward. Our next week, remember to set your clocks forward an hour because the time will be changing. So you come to the church you want to hopefully attend, service you want to attend. So make it on time for that. Um, with that, that ends our announcements. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We go in peace to fear God, love God, and trust God.